that I, I kind of get up humming and whistling in the morning, so uh, I'm happy to be alive. It is great. Tom Dickey is one person who really appreciates life, and he doesn't take anything for granted. As a husband, father, and grandfather, his family means the world to him. And he loves his work as an underground contractor. He has years of experience in horizontal directional drilling, the kind of digging that leaves the surface intact while creating a tunnel underneath for utilities. He's considered one of the best and has done directional work in all kinds of settings, even beneath rivers and lakes. Tom places a high priority on safety and with good reason. He knows all too well the dangers that lie hidden beneath the ground. At the end of a major project, he was asked to do a small additional section before he left. Instead of saying, I can't do it today, I'll have to come back, I, I took the equipment out there. I didn't have my safety equipment. I, that truck was back down at my shop because I'd already moved some of the equipment home. Tom did what lots of people do. He weighed time and convenience against safety and took a chance, one that nearly cost him his life. I'd worked with it enough. I knew that, you know, I could just handle this and you just, you never suspect that today's going to be the day, you know. He did the drilling, then knelt down at the end point using a shovel to make a final adjustment. He slipped and made contact with 7,200 volts of electricity from underground power lines. Everything went into slow motion and as soon as I slipped and fell into it and energized myself up, I felt like I verbally said, oh my gosh, Tom, you just killed yourself. I knew exactly what I was into and I knew that I had made a grievous error. And the next thing I thought of was, uh, it was the family and what, what was my wife going to do without me? What were my kids going to go through and what were they going to do without me? Within a few seconds, the fuse tripped and Tom was thrown backward. I started realizing that my hands were over my head and as I drug my hands back over my gloves were on fire because I was wearing yellow cotton farmer gloves, which you never do and you know how they can, they had bursted into flames and I had coveralls on. I realized my knees were on fire where, my, where the electricity went through me and out, out my legs. It burnt holes through my coveralls. They were on fire. In excruciating pain, Tom remained conscious throughout. A few minutes later, emergency personnel rushed Tom to the hospital. The doctor provided a grim prognosis. He asked me if I was religious, and of course I said, oh yeah, I, I, am, I am. And he said, uh, well, the, you know, the next 24, 48 hours are going to be cri critical, and it's a good possibility you're not going to survive. His wife, Bonnie, a teacher, got the call to leave school. She picked up daughter Kathleen from high school on the way. As soon as I got there, there was a waiting room, and my pastor was waiting, and some of my, my sister, and um, people from church, um, uh, some friends that were already there. Son Josh, several miles away at his first semester of college, raced back. Many others arrived before they were allowed to see Tom. He looked like the same dad that I'd always had, so that kind of put a calm to me. But then when the doctors got into telling us um, what was going to go on and you know, people who get in electricity with the voltage that he had don't survive and that he's awake and coherent is, is a blessing. And you need to call in the family because he might, you know, he could take a turn for the worse within minutes. They said, uh, you're walking around the burn unit and you're seeing all these other patients in these other rooms look really bad because they had been actually burned, you know, with fire, uh, some type of fire ac uh, accident like that. Um, and they said, but actually Tom is, is much worse because his are internal. And uh, what you see on these other people is exactly what um, their issues are, but you can't see his and his are going to continue to get worse. The, the hole in my hand was so deep that the bones were showing and, not, and it actually burnt the tendons off and the tendons snapped back up in my arm. So to fill that hole in, they had the graft and they couldn't, there was nothing in the hole for the grafting to graft to. So what they did is they cut a V in my, and pulled it up and put my hand there and sewed that V back down over my hand. And so that, that tissue off of my side groin area still was being fed from my body and then it just started growing. 
that was really, really tough for him. You just have to lay there with his hand attached to him for weeks at a time. And he, uh, he asked me uh, most days to just sit and read from the Bible to him. That brought him comfort because um, he was in so much pain. Um, so I would sit there and read to him. Um, the amount of visitors were just unbelievable. They finally just put signs up in the hallway. The family credits their faith and the care and support of friends and family with getting them through the many challenges in Tom's fight to save his hands and legs. It's not one of those things where you have a surgery, you fix your limb, and it's done with. I just remember it always seemed like something else would ha happen. And never, never seemed to. One step forward, three back. <laughs> never seemed to be done. And even after I came home, you know, I couldn't bathe myself. You know, for a long time, you know, you just, everybody had to do everything for you, and it was, it, that's hard to take, you know. I started feeling sorry for myself, and I remember, why me, Lord? You know, why are you doing this to me? And uh, I dwelled on that for a long time. And uh, finally, this voice said to me one time, said, Tom, I didn't do it to you, you did it to yourself. You know, you're lucky you're alive. And that's why he doesn't want anyone to take chances when it comes to underground utilities. You know, people got to understand when you when you deal with electricity, and you do silly things, it changes your life, and it uh, it changes the people's lives around you. It's a miracle that I'm still living in the house that I live in that we were able to hold on to things, and that's another thing. You know, you got to realize something can happen to you. You can't make a living. You can't pay for what you have. You may lose everything you've got besides. Uh, you know, besides limbs and fingers and whatever else, besides your life. Working with Safe Electricity's Teach Learn Care TLC campaign, he wants to teach you from his experience. Tom urges everyone to learn how to dig safely, to use that information and care enough to share it with others. Safety starts with calling 811 to have underground utilities marked before digging, whether it's planting a tree, putting in a deck, landscaping, or building an addition. The service is free and can help prevent accidents. Even a homeowner that puts a shovel in the ground in his backyard and gets into his single phase or, or the, the electricity coming from the cabinet up to his house, if it's in the ground, and it can be his last day. And digging into other utilities, such as natural gas lines, can be dangerous and potentially deadly. And I have a great renewed respect for, you know, not only electricity, but gas can get you in trouble, different things in the ground. There's a lot of things out there that, uh, especially a homeowner, a layman, doesn't know about, never mind a, a, a contractor like me that knows. If someone digs into utilities without getting them marked first, they can suffer not only personal injury, but are legally liable for utility damage. Plan ahead and call a few days in advance. After utilities are marked, dig at least 18 inches away from the marking and always use caution. Tom does a safety walkthrough at each job site before he sets up his equipment and urges everyone to take time to consider what might be beneath the surface. We've got drainage, uh, sewer, uh, septic systems, gas, uh, electrics overhead, and there's, no fiber that I'm ordering. and there's no fiber but telephone and there's possibly cable TV out here. So uh, we need to look at at least uh, six, seven, or eight different products that could be in the ground as we do our walkthrough. Years later, Tom still lives with pain every day, but he won't take anything stronger than over-the-counter pain medication so he can keep operating heavy equipment. But he is such a strong person um, and still to this day um, amazes me with the strength that he has, both physically to be still doing this job and I, as well as um, just, um, spiritually and emotionally to be able to cope with everything that he has and just keep moving forward at all times. The more I read, the more I see that people having the same accidents. I am the only one that I know that hasn't lost limbs. It was a, it was a total miracle. Has, I didn't lose a leg, didn't lose my fingers, didn't lose my arms. You know, I hurt a lot and it's painful and it's, you know, inconvenient sometimes to do some of the things I do. but. I'm real thankful to be where I'm at. Please, 
safety first.